it's early morning, August 6th, and we are at Pearl Harbor, about to go into the visitor center. Welcome. Thank you. How y'all doing? The attack on Pearl Harbor began at 7.55 a.m. with torpedo planes coming in waves from both the north and south while flying at an altitude of only 30 feet. The first few torpedoes slammed into the hull of the USS Oklahoma, exactly in the spot where the battleship Missouri is today. Oklahoma began to tilt, and in less than 12 minutes, she had completely rolled over, only stopping when her masts hit the bottom of the harbor. At 8.06 a.m., a fatal blow struck the Arizona. The Japanese bomb cut through the deck in the vicinity of gun turret number two, which would have been about 200 feet to the left of the memorial. Seconds later, it detonated the ammunition magazines located in the forward section of the ship. The result was a massive explosion that tore the ship in half and set off a fire that burned for more than two days and consumed 1,177 members of Arizona's crew. Over 900 men remain entombed on the Arizona today. Covering its back wall are the names of 1,177 American servicemen who died on board. That is the largest loss of life of any ship in American naval history. It's important to remember that this wasn't just an attack on Pearl Harbor. It was an attack on all of Oahu. Fifteen minutes before the assault here, Japanese aircraft struck all the military airfields around the island and neutralized American air power. Within the next 15 minutes, they neutralized American naval power here as well. On December 7, 1941, Pearl Harbor witnessed the dawn of a new era. As World War II came to American shores, men and women fought and died side by side. Battleship Missouri, my name is Val, I'll be your tour guide. Let's start off with a little bit of history about this ship. Construction of the Battleship Missouri was begun on January 6, 1941 in the New York Navy Yard in Brooklyn, New York. She was launched and christened by Mary Margaret Truman, daughter of then junior Senator Harry S. Truman of the state of Missouri on January 29, 1944. She is one of four Iowa-class battleships ever built. She is the last one to be completed. In World War II, she participated with Allied forces in the Battle of Iwo Jima, Battle of Okinawa, and land bombardment of mainland Japan. On September 2, 1945, her decks were witness to the surrender of Japanese forces ending World War II. Behind you, gun turrets one and two. After at the back of the ship is gun turret three. Three guns per turret, a total of nine guns. These are 16 inch 50 caliber rifles. They each move independently of each other. They each weigh 239,000 pounds, which is equivalent to an American space shuttle. They fire off two rounds a minute, one round every 30 seconds. That round is going to travel at Mach 2 speed or twice the speed of sound. It's going to get to its target in 91 seconds. Its accuracy rate is 23 to 25 miles, which will be over that mountain range to the right. 
she fires off two different types of projectiles. One is on that cart down there, that green one. That is your armor piercing projectile. That is 2,700 pounds. So if any of you watched that movie Battleship, you know there's no way those four guys were carrying that projectile. That's just not happening. Right. So remember now, in 1945, this is an active duty battleship. So even though they have nicely provided us with this awning covering, this is not here in 1945. This is all open to the elements. They have this gun turret turned at a slight 30 degree angle because they're trying to fit as many people as possible on this deck. Just like in this photo, there is an officer's delegation standing alongside here. Where the plaque sits, all they did was they grabbed the table out of the mess decks, put the table there, put a tablecloth on it, put two chairs, the two copies of the surrender documents are sitting on that table waiting to be signed. It is September 2nd, 1945. It is an overcast Sunday morning. Battleship Missouri is anchored in Tokyo Bay. Besides the Battleship Missouri, there are over 250 Allied ships all anchored in Tokyo Bay that day. The Japanese delegation arrives, they come right up these exact same steps that you did. They take their place here on the deck. Out steps General MacArthur, Admiral Nimitz, and Admiral Halsey. They come down, they take their spot on the deck. Once everyone's in position, the chaplain says a prayer. At 9.02, the ceremony begins. After his opening remarks, he motions for number 20, Mr. Mamoru Shigemitsu. He is the Japanese foreign minister. He represents Emperor Hirohito. He is the first one to come forward and sign the documents of surrender. When he is done, number 21, General Umezu. He represents the Imperial Army. He's the second one to sign the surrender documents. When both gentlemen are done and return to their places, it is General MacArthur's turn. General MacArthur is going to use six different pens when he signs these documents. But before he begins signing, he motions for two very tired looking, gaunt gentlemen to come and stand behind him. These two gentlemen have been chosen to represent all the prisoners of war in the Pacific. So when General MacArthur signs with that first pen, he turns around and hands it to Lieutenant General Wainwright. The second pen, he turns around and hands it to Lieutenant General Percival. The third pen, when you look at the replica of the documents, there's an orange pen. General MacArthur's wife gave him an orange pen that was to be her memento of the occasion. She did get it, but later on she did give testimony that said, lashing you, it had been in the U.S. Embassy in Tokyo, and it went missing. You have China. The United Kingdom, the USSR, Australia, Canada, France, the Netherlands, and New Zealand. At 9.25, the ceremony is over. It has taken only 23 minutes to end World War II. Alright, does anyone know what the word kamikaze means? Divine wind. Very good, divine wind. What it is, is in the 1200s, the Mongols built a fleet of ships. They wanted to expand their empire. They decided that they were going to try and get to Japan and take over Japan, invade Japan. They got pretty close when all of a sudden a typhoon came up out of nowhere. Destroyed the entire Mongol fleet. But on April 11, 1945, at 2.43 in the afternoon, right here on our starboard side, a lone kamikaze plane is coming flying in, heading straight for Battleship Missouri. They're firing the anti-aircraft weapons. They think they've hit it. It seems to be losing some altitude when it picks right back up a little bit. Right behind you where those two round mooring bits are. If you look on this side, from this angle, you can see the slight curve on the side of the ship where that kamikaze plane hit. Left side of the kamikaze plane hits the battleship Missouri. Lucky for us, most of that aircraft just breaks right off and falls right into the ocean. So does that bomb. Even luckier, the bomb does not detonate. The big news headline on April 12, 1945 is that President Franklin Delano Roosevelt has passed away and Vice President Harry Truman is now the President of the United States. So for the battleship Missouri, everything has come full circle. Because after all, it is President Truman's daughter who has christened this ship. He is from the state of Missouri, and that is how this ship is chosen to be the site of the surrender ceremony. All right, before I let you folks go wandering off on your own, besides the old five navigation bridge, that little round half moon, you see where the door is open? Open that door, there's a ladder to go down. Please be careful, it is a
Here we are in the Chief Petty Officer's Lounge, one of the few air-conditioned places on the boat. So where did Sam go to? the view they told us about. Get up the bow of the ship over the Arizona.